So what I'm only thinking about doing is we collect that stud. First collection of the year. Oh, it's gonna be a freaking disaster. Well, welcome back to the Mendota Ranch. So it's springtime, uh, first week of May. We're breeding mares. These are our own mares. The only repro work I do anymore, you know, used to, I used to have thousands of mares. We used to do thousands of embryos and cloning and all this crazy stuff. And I've kind of gotten over that. And uh, so now I just do my personal mares and uh, family and close friends is pretty much all I breed. And so here's what's going on right now today is we're going through mares. I'm ultrasounding the mares, determining them uh, w if they're ready to breed. And then if they are, we'll collect the stallion and we'll breed them. So when I say I'm determining if they're ready to breed, what I, essentially what I'm doing is I go in there, I palpate the cervix and I'm looking at the uterus and feeling the uterus. Cause when they come in the heat, the uterus kind of pumps up, you know, and gets all this blood pumped in there from there. I'm looking at the ovaries and I'm looking at a dominant follicle. The follicles on the ovaries is where the oocyte is, that's a female egg. And once it gets up to about 30 to 35 millimeters big, then she'll be, that means she's probably ready to ovulate within a day. This mare here is called, we call her Ruby 2. I think she's like 14 years old. She's the clone, one of the very first clones. Uh, she's a clone of Playboy's Ruby. Playboy's Ruby is the second all time leading producing mare. Uh, you know, uh, in the cutting horse world. So she, um, I think I think the original produced right at three million. So that means her colts have won about three million. She's a great old mare. I'm not into the cutting much anymore, you know? I just can't stand the politics of it all. So I kind of quit showing horses a couple years ago, but I still, you know, after you after you show horses for as long as I did, um, you um, you can't go back. It's kind of like eating really good steak. You don't want to go to eating crappy steak. So you got to have a good horses to ride. So my rule of thumb, even here on the ranch, is I just my leg doesn't fit over a crappy horse. It's always a good horse. So that's why I spend the time to breed a good horse. I want a good mare. I, you have to have a great mare to have a great colt. So some people say it's 50-50. I call bull crap on that. I say the mare is 75% of it. A great mare. Like like Ruby, she produces the same foal every time almost. That's what makes a great mare. All right, so I'm going in here rectally. And now she's a, she's a pusher. Okay. So ovary there nothing nothing see here's ovary see these are follicles see the little circles there those are those are just immature follicles uterus has got a little of edema not much and then she got a big old follicle there that's about a 40 millimeter so she's she's definitely a breeder today she's got a little bit of edema i'd like to see more see she's got some pretty good edema there but she is a lewd lice, so we gave her some prostaglandin, so she's she's definitely a breeder today. So typically what I'd do is I'd breed her right now, but we're gonna check all the other mares and see what else we got to breed. We might have about four, four or five more mares to breed today. So now let's ride her down. This is how I do it. Okay, so she was, um, that was on a right ovary. So I go RO, right ovary, 40. So 40 is the size of her follicle. And then I'm gonna go with the edema, E for edema. And she was a two plus. Three is better, two plus is good. So that's kind of my note for now. And then that means she's definitely a breeder for right now. But we've got to check, we got a handful more, more mares to check. And uh, we'll see where they're all at and, and make a game plan from there. Cause we might have, we might have to collect that one stud and breed maybe five, four or five mares. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of waiting. She's pushing really hard against me. 
So I don't want to, I don't want to tear a rectum or anything. So I just kind of wait, wait her out. So this mare has nothing on the left there. A lot of edema. See all the edema? This is the uterus here. It's got a lot of edema. Uh, big old fog over here. See there. She actually got two pretty big ones. That's what she said. The problem with two dominant follicles like that, when the first cycle of the year, a lot of times they'll have those. And if both of them were to ovulate and being we're not flushing embryos out of this mare, she could have twins. And so then, and then you get an issue, I'll have to pinch one of the embryos off if she has, you know, twin embryos because they can't carry twins. So that, that's an issue I kind of got to deal with. Now, if we were doing an embryo transfer, I'd be all excited. I'd go, oh, hell yeah, and I'd be giving a shot. I like getting two embryos, and um, but being that Mary's just gonna carry it herself, she can't carry two embryos. See that? That's a cyst right there. Kind of the dangers here are um, her jumping and kicking me over this. But more of the dangers sometimes they'll sit on this gate like that and then they drop to break your arm. I don't know what would be worse. Probably getting kicked in the chin. I got a permanent hoof mark under my armpit where I caught one in the right down to the armpit. That freaking hurt. So this is a mare, mare I cloned. So that colt, the colt's out of two clones. So the colt's out of this mare who's a clone, Clay's little peppy. And then the stallion is my is my stallion, that sister CD uh, clone, which we call CD Reloaded. I mean, you know, some people say, well, that's just not right. And I said, well, what's not right about it? Well, I don't know, I just don't like it. And I'm like, well, what part do you not like? And they go, well, I don't know. I just don't like it. Well, you don't know nothing about it. No, I just don't like it. You know, they watch some sci-fi movie that said cloning was bad. Cloning happens naturally. Horses naturally clone themselves. Identical twins are clones. And that's all we're, all, when we start cloning, that's all we're doing is mim mimicking what happens naturally. What's the purpose of cloning? Preserving the genetics. It's not making an identical twin, just like that little dog you see running around here. She's a clone. She acts nothing like the original. Now she has the exact same DNA. Doesn't mean she, she acts the same. So you, you know you get the um, you get you get the epigenetics coming in later. But um, you know in, in the livestock world, being able to like say in the deer world, you got this great doe that produces great bucks. Well, you'd like to be able to produce more of them out of more bucks. So you'd like to have six copies of this great doe and breed her to six or seven great bucks. And that's the same way in the horse world. One of the things I've done in the horse world is I've cloned this horse, the, my stallion, and he's free of all known genetic diseases, okay? So in the, in the cold horse world, they got all these terrible diseases known, like herd in the cutting world, it's all herded. So the skin's falling off all these horses. All these horses are horse, herded positive. All mine are herded are, are herd carriers, except for the clone. And the reason I cloned that horse is because I got to go to something I got to get away from this genetic disease. And so that's where cloning comes in. We, we can go off, because we in the horse world, we, we've taken this 10 lane highway and narrowed it down to a two lane highway. Now, with cloning, we can add a highway or two highways of genetics that were lost. And I say how his genetics were lost, because he was castrated. So when he was castrated, we lost his genetics. And so, I bring him back as a stallion, and of course we've regained the genetics now uh, with cloning, with the technology cloning. And even, and that's even in the, um, you know, we cloned some, uh, I was on the team that helped clone uh, some cattle for uh, Texas A&M, and we cloned these great carcasses. So we find this great carcass, that's a year grade one prime. That means, that means this carcass has essentially no waste fat it has all the taste fat no waste fat what that means that means it's extremely efficient instead of having 2400 pounds of corn fed into him it only took 1200 pounds of corn essentially is what it means 
And so to be able to take that carcass and then clone that animal and produce a bull from that animal and because he was a steer so we produced that bull and now that bull's bred uh, to multiple uh, um, cows and his offsprings are extremely well off and what we found that being year grade one prime every day of your life has to be perfect perfect or you're not going to be yield grade one prime and so we, what we've always said is that that animal's probably resistant to a lot of diseases. And sure enough, his offspring seem to be that way. His offsprings are producing, they're not all yield grade one prime, but their choice, you know, maybe yield grade two. That's a big deal. As screwed up as the cattle business is, what, what that does, you know, if you can, if I can go and say, I raise a calf, that goes year grade one prime. Well, number one, he did it on less feed. He did it on half the amount of feed that it cost him before. And then number two, I get a premium because he's a prime. So he saved me four or five hundred dollars, and then he gave me four or five hundred dollars. So that's that's a win-win. That's the goal. This is this little mare here is one of my show mares. That of course I don't show anymore. I did show, but. Uh, she's out of Playboy's Ruby the clone, you know, we checked her earlier, and then she's also out of the clone of Smart Little Lena. Uh, you know, Texas A&M clones of Smart Little Lena's just totally screwed it up. And these Smart Little Lena's came up all jacked up, just screwed up. Well, they sold them. They said, which one do you want? I said, I want the ugliest one you got. Because I know it doesn't matter what they did, you know, the epigenetics doesn't matter. It's, it's the semen that matters. So all I'm buying is a semen tank. And so I bought the ugliest smart little Lena they had. And that's where this one came from. She's a great little mare. You know, speaking of that, you know, I've got a cloning lab here and uh, really the only legal cloning lab in Texas. And um, if y'all are interested in cloning or, you know, some people, you might not give a crap. But if you, you know, if you want me to tell you how we clone, the process step by step i'll be glad to do it just drop it in a, drop me a bunch of comments and i'll uh, i'll show you step by step on how we clone i, I mean i got no secrets here um it's pretty interesting stuff and it's, you know we've you know with greg and Vigen and all them we cloned you know well over 400 horses and i've still got the patent on cloning deer not that there's much deer business in it nowadays but um, but yeah, y'all let me know. She's kind of thinking about it, but I don't know. She's still, I think she could be the, you know, think about, it. she can go home. You know, the thing about horses is they're not machines. You can't just give them a shot. They don't cycle year around. So in the winter they shut down, you know, unless you put them on lights, you can trick them by putting them on the lights. So the light, the amount of lights that are coming in through the eyes, stimulates a pituitary gland and that's what gets them cycling but if they're not cycling you just can't give them a shot and make them cycle so um, i don't put my marriage in lights anymore uh used to when i show one one early colts i would but i just kind of let it roll so they they naturally start cycling you know april 15th something like that and so uh, for me i kind of let them just do their own thing start breeding them the first of, uh end of april first of may that gives me an april colt usually and I'm happy with an April colt because essentially I just want a good mature colt that I can start riding as a two-year-old and uh, I'm not trying to show them I'm not you know I just want a good horse but you know used to back in the day when we when I had thousands of mares we had mares in the light we were using all kinds of drugs because we wanted our you know our race horses born in, in you know January 1st and just crap like that you know, after you do that for 25 years, and I palpated, I used to palpate like 20,000 mares a year. I don't know, just standing behind a mare and palpating, it used to not bother me, now it's kind of like, eh, kind of over it. It just turns into work after a while, but doing my own stuff, I like it, just because I know the horse, and I'm excited about the foal, and uh, you know, stuff like that, but that's, you know, we get to do a lot of cool stuff out here. 
And if you, you know, if you like seeing this kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe and, and uh, follow me on Instagram, The Mendota Ranch. Um, we got tons of helicopter stuff we do too, and tons of shooting. And the more you subscribe, the more uh, um, YouTube will let you watch me because YouTube seems to shut down my shooting stuff. I don't know why. They're not into it. <laughs> so here's the deal. We got uh, these are shipped in semen. We got one breeder here, a breeder there, maybe a breeder. Maybe, maybe. So what I'm only thinking about doing is we collect that stud. First collection of the year. Oh, it's going to be a freaking disaster. So this stud is just a three-year-old. I guess he's four now. We collected him about five, six times last year. And this will be the first time we collect him this year. I'm telling you, this is going to be a damn disaster. But hell, the camera's here. Let's do it. It's going to be bad. All right, so we're building AV now. So we get to essentially we get the temperature up to about 50, 60 degrees Celsius, and then this will be the collection. So you've got two two parts of this. You got the bottle where the semen will go. This is the gel. So you catch the we catch the gel in this uh, gel screener strainer, whatever you call it, and it just essentially just screws on like that. Put a cover over it. This little cover. I just protect, keeps it warm, protects it from the sunlight. So now once this is warmed up, I'll put a glove on and we'll lube it up. We're ready for the wreck. So this glove here, so I'll have the AV in this hand and then this glove will be the glove and I keep my hand in the AV to keep it warm while we're waiting on the stallion to get ready. So it's just not like a slam dunk deal. You don't just kind of run in there and they jump. At least my stallion doesn't. And essentially what I'm gonna do is lube it up and it's like way too tight right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it, let some water out. So normally what we would do, we'd get the stallion in, get him ready, uh, wash him up and then let him jump. But being this, being we're still, you know, we never really finished training him last year to jump, to make the jump. So we'll probably, we're not gonna wash him today. We're just gonna try to get through the moment. So it's about like trying to jack off a terrorist. I mean, it's freaking dangerous as hell. They're kicking and rearing up. But the thing is, once we get the semen collected, then we can breed, you know, a bunch of mares with him. So, so kind of, I mean, every stud's a little different. I like these Missouri AVs, they work good. So I want to be able to stick my arm in there, make a good fist, because because right before they ejaculate, their, it, you know, it flares out and uh, you don't want to hurt them by any means. All right, so let's come out here and we'll see what kind of wreck we get into. Ruby here is in heat, so we got her where she, you know, hopefully nothing bad happens to her. But we bring her in to tease the stallion with to get him ready, and then we'll bring the stallion over here to the dummy and uh, and jump the dummy. We've had, you know, one time we had, a, oh, we had five or six stallions here, and it was, a, we just did this all the time, and truthfully, you know, I've got some buddies that love the stallion side of it, you know, the, the semen collection and all that. <laughs> me, I just, I would just soon call somebody and say, hey, send me some semen. <laughs> this part here can be, I mean, you can literally sit here for 30 minutes. A lot of times, if, they, if I don't get them collected in about two or three jumps, I just go put them up, come back an hour later. But this can turn into freaking work here. Trying. Almost. Oh my 
Get out, you son of a bitch. Fucking, fucking shithead. I don't know if we got him or not. Got a little bit. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and call it. I don't think we got him. Got enough of him. Yeah, go home. We, we've tried hard enough. Either way, go home. So, yeah, that's about, that's about how I expected. Gonna be pretty crappy. You know, first collection of the year. We'll see what, we'll see what semen looks like. Probably not gonna be very good. Not very much. It's not about the, the, the volume, it's about the concentration. So let's see how much, see if there is any semen, and see how much semen we got in here. Yeah, it's junk. That's a no go. So let's uh, let's go let's let's start over and get go again. Good job. <laughs> you got him that time. I've had one stud. We had one stud, straight silver. He's an older stud. Man, he is a gentleman all the way. Didn't have to have a mare in there or nothing. You just walk in there, he sees that dummy, he mounts it, we're done. I mean, literally it takes, it takes longer to build the AV than it took to collect him. He was awesome. See, it's clean, nice clean, looks good. So we'll measure this. And uh, you know, the other one, he'd mounted two or three times. We had piss and dirt and just crap in there. That's the gel. So we, we pull the gel off. Now this machine here is going to measure the concentration per milliliter. I want half a billion mobile sperm for each mare. So that's a pretty good collection right now. We're saying we're at, call it two, 259, that's per milliliter. That's live sales per milliliter. And they've got better machines. I've had this machine for 25 years. I'm kind of attached to it. so. I, and it's not like I'm really shipping all over the world, so I really don't give a crap. So, so now we got—we know we got 259, call it 260, sales, of sperm sales per milliliter. So now let's look and see how many of them of alive. So we're going to look at a percentage. You know, being his first collection of the year, not bad, not good. So swimming like this is considered dead. I want just kind of what's going straight ahead. You know, this is his first collection of the year, so he's got a lot of dead sperm in there. Cause, so we kind of clean him out today, and then Wednesday he'll be a lot better. You know, 48 hours, he'll clean up and be a lot better. So today, I'm calling it 50% motility. Total mobile is, say, 7.5. So we could breed, um, you know, four mares today. Okay. So now we're loaded. That's a big load. That's what she said. Ha. I don't get it. All right. So now we've collected studs. So now we need to wash the mare up and breed her. The, I gave her a shot. Essentially what it does, it makes her ovulate. So she's probably going to ovulate on her own anyways. But this is just to ensure that she does ovulate so we don't have to go through this. Because I only want to, if I can, I only want to breed her one time. So we don't want to squirt water in there because water would kill the semen. So I'm kind of going to the side here. Ivory soap is what I use. It, you know, it leaves less residue. Um, the best way to tell residue is wash your coffee cup with it. If you taste soap, it's got a residue. Okay, so on the horse is a little different than a cow. So, so essentially we go in vaginally and I'm just gonna 
open her up. I'm, I'm going in vaginally. I got the pipette, kind of kind of protecting the tip of the pipette with my hand. The cervix is super soft right there. I've got my index finger started in the cervix. So now that I've got it started in the cervix, I've got the, I got the pipette in there. I'm just slow, I'm just kind of slowly pushing the semen down in there. And I've got the cervix, I got the pipette in there and I got the cervix kind of pinched off. And we use these, you don't want to use a syringe with a rubber end that kills the hell out of the semen. So now I've just got the cervix pinched off and I just kind of give the semen time to work down into the uterus. Pretty much then come out real slow. We don't want to suck a bunch of air in there. That's it. And then we'll go do, do the next mare. So about 90% of the shots that we give are, um, you know, in the vein on a horse. You know, a lot of times you give a horse a shot in the muscle, you know, we get, you know, they get abscess. But like when you got a horse colicking or anytime you're sedating a horse or something, we're always going in the vein and, and people have trouble going in the vein. And, and the way, here's the trick. I mean, I do thousands of them. Number one, you get the syringe. You see the open part of the syringe, the open part? You want it looking at you, okay? And then when you get up here on this mare or a horse, you see this little groove right here? You got, see this little groove here? That's, that's where the vein is. And so reach down here and you see how I, pop, how I made it pop up right there? And also I keep a straight arm in case for some reason she lunges or jumps, it, keeps, it pushes me out. Okay, so now I've got the open part of the vein, look, uh, open part of the syringe looking at me. I lay it right on there and I bend it. See how I'm pushing a little pressure on it? And give it a two or three second count. Don't rush it. And then you can just, and what it, what it does, it kind of confuses those nerves. And then you just slide it right in there. And then pull back and you got blood, okay? So you see how that was, how easy that was? So just, the trick is, people try to like to poke it. Don't poke it, push it on there and hold it and it confuses those nerves and then slides it right in and you pull blood out. Simple as that. That was just a little handy tip from somebody that's done that a million times. Pretty much wraps up breeding mares. You've seen me breed a mare. We've collected stud. You know, it's his first trip of the year so it's uh, it was a little bit of a wreck but we got through it. <laughs> You know, if you like this kind of ranch stuff, I know we're still going to be in the helicopter, still going to be shooting guns, doing all the fun stuff. But this is a ranch, and we do have other things. We got hay, we got horses, we got just neat stuff. Send me a comment. Follow me. Tell your friends to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, The Mendota Ranch. All this kind of stuff uh, we'll be doing. If you like it, let me know. See you.